and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Today's topic is water displacement. All matter, even water, has mass and takes up space or has volume. So we're going to look at a few experiments that you can do at home to show for yourself to see what kind of water displacement can lead to what amount of volume an object takes up. So the first experiment we're going to do is take two glasses or more, I just happen to have two here, and two random objects you have around the house. I'm going to choose for my epic nerddom my 3D printed TARDIS for one and my D20 from my uh, Dungeons and Dragons die set and something to pour and measure out water equally into each one of these containers. So I happen to have a, a water kitchen measuring cup here. So this one is at two tablespoon amounts. So I have water, which I have colored blue to make it easier to see for the videos. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of water in each of the glasses. One and two. And to find volume using water displacement, we're going to need to find the difference of the water levels. So the first thing we need to do is look at the water level. So I didn't have a pen here and notice they're equal there, but let's mark it. This is a dry erase marker. I'm going to mark here on the glass where the water is in the container. Water is the state of matter liquid state of matter takes the shape of the container. So I have marked what is considered V1 or V sub I which is our initial volume and when we add the object, the solid object to the water, it will displace the water moving it upward in the container and that displacement will show us the amount of volume that this object is taking up in the container with the water. So let's first take the TARDIS. The volume is bigger on the inside, but let's see what it is on the outside. So we'll drop it in. Oh, and it's floating. There we go. Let that settle. But notice the line of the water moved from its initial point to its final point, or uh, V sub F, the final volume. For the D20, there we go. And as you can see, that one too moved from its initial volume to a final volume. I'll take my marker, and again as I did at the beginning, do the second time. Now let's review the two. Now from the two, which one displaced more volume of water? The TARDIS, because it had a larger mass. It was bigger than the D20 die, because you can see the D20 die displaced less water. Now this is through observation. There are no mathematical measured markings on the sides of these glasses, so we couldn't be for sure what those volume measurements are. So this one is an observational water displacement activity. So we're going to clean up this one, and we're going to move to one that can be more measurable of the amount of volume that has been displaced. The next half of our experiment has to do with the Archimedes principle which states that if an object is partially or fully immersed in a fluid, which we're working with H2O, which is water, then the 
upward force or buoyancy floating force acting on the object or body is equal to weight of the fluid, which is water, which has been displaced. And that came from a story of Archimedes, the scientist that discovered this principle. When he was taking a bath, he found that as his body, being the object, gets into the pool of water, that water starts to spill out of the bath around him. And he has what's called a eureka moment, where he exclaims, being in the bath, that he determines from this principle that the mass of the water that is displaced out of the bath is equal to the volume of the water that is displaced, the amount of water that comes out of the bath, times the density of the water, which in our case, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Making this experiment, the mass of the displaced water is equal to the volume of the displaced water, making it an equal ratio. So this will allow for you to see that the body, which I have a granite egg, uh, which we will be using as our Archimedes egg in our experiment. And for this, you will need a plastic container. You will need a glass, and I do recommend for equal measurement, this glass is equal to one cup of water. A measuring cup, this one is two cups. A calculator if you need it for calculations. And a scale that will hopefully measure in grams, so this one is my kitchen scale. But for this experiment, we're actually solving for the mass of the displaced water. So what you're doing with calculations, you'll be solving. So we'll use this for the sort of correcting our math at the very end. So first, take your clear plastic bucket of water and set it in front of you. So I'll pull it back here so we get a better view. And take your one cup glass container and set it in the very center, just like that. So this plastic container is going to be what's going to catch our displaced overflow of water. And I'm going to measure out one cup of water, and you'll fill your cup that is inside the plastic container to the very top just enough before you think it would overflow into the plastic container. There we go. And that would be equal to one cup. Now, just like the experiment beforehand, we did it where we had an initial volume and a final volume. Our initial volume, which is inside of this glass container, inside the plastic bucket, is one cup, or 250 milliliters of water. So 250 milliliters of water is our initial volume. Now we're going to add our Archimedes egg to the bath. And as you add your Archimedes egg, or your object, or your body, notice what happens to the water as you slowly submerge the object into the bath water. Now notice the glass remains full. The glass is still full of water. The volume, which is the volume of the mass of the object that you placed inside, is taking up the space that the spilled over water was originally taking up. So the volume of your cup is still one cup, but you have that leftover amount that spilled out. So this leftover amount that has spilled out is what we want to take measurement of. So what you'll need to do once you have your spillover displaced Eureka water outside, I have the lid to this container, Carefully lift up and move out and away from you. Back. 
So now we have this to work with. I'm going to pull out the measuring cup. So our initial volume was one cup. So we're going to see what our spillover, our volume of display. So it is equal to, so how I'm doing that is I'm looking at right at the measurement of one half. So it is half a cup. So we have moved from one cup of water to a half a cup of water as our volume that was displaced. So our initial volume was 250 milliliters or one cup. Now half of 250 milliliters is 125 milliliters. So if we have 250 milliliters of water, as our initial starting point minus our final which is 125 milliliters of displaced water that would make our displaced volume of water 125 milliliters so this is our 125 milliliters which is our volume of our displaced water now doing the math of our displaced water we have the Archimedes principle which states that the mass of the displaced water is equal to the volume of the displaced water times the water density. So we have our things that we're solving for. We're looking for mass, oh, which we concluded that the volume of the water displaced is 125 milliliters because we subtracted 125 and we had the original or the initial volume, which was uh, 250. So to do those subtractions you equal out to 125 milliliters for your displaced volume of water and your density was our given which was 1 gram per milliliter. So we did the math where we did 125 milliliters times 1 gram per milliliter the milliliters cancel out, leaving us with 125 grams of water that was displaced. So the gram amount is the mass of the water that was displaced from the bath. So we have our water here that was displaced. We know the volume is 125 milliliters, but let's check and confirm our math here that 125 grams is what we get when we measure it from the scale. So I have the kitchen scale set in front so I'm going to add another bowl to our scale and I'm going to tear it out so it's equal to zero and I'm going to add the volume of our displaced water to determine if it is equal to the mass of the displaced water. And as you can see, it comes up to 126, so it looks like we got an extra drop in there. 126 grams, which would then be equal plus or minus a few. You may find that when you do yours, it may be a little bit less or a little bit more. So that's plus or minus some of the leftover water or extra spill that may have occurred moving your glass out of your container. So try this at home. Determine your math to be the same, equal to, once you measure. And remember, science never stops. <music>